who I think like Margie, we built from a small group of us to a larger group and all, I never, because this is not my way of thinking, uh, but I never really was thinking about the money part. And at first the Peace Institute didn't have people even register and give a certain amount of money. And one day the parish administrator said to me, Carol, you know the Peace Institute needs money. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that never occurred to me. It was that kind of a thing. So I, um, we started putting it out there. And then uh, this guy at our church who's a very good sign maker. You've probably seen some of our signs out there. They're professional. Uh, and he did peace, unity, love, you know, all of the seven principles of peace, smaller ones. And then we walk in peace and stuff like that. So he said to me, you know, we could really set a better goal, a bigger goal. And, um, you know, people seem to want to hit goals. <laughs> so that was the message to me. I didn't realize that either. I've really had to learn along the way about how to do some of this. And at the same time, the Peace Institute began putting more stuff out about um, how to raise funds and that they needed funds to operate and became, uh, so that was good. So, uh, but we, we have often had Tina or somebody from the Peace Institute come to our church in the month or two before. And that, the stories are amazing. The videos that you saw, especially of Carla and the survivors, we'll put them out for people to see. Um, and they can be shown year after year because I'm still touched when I see them. And um, uh, this year we had Milton Jones from the Peace Institute who came to the he came and spoke to us. He came and spoke to Connie's group, the interfaith group. And he has started this re-entry program for people leaving the Plymouth County um, jail. And um, they give, it's just an amazing, another extension of the Peace Institute into some wider work. So uh, we had him come and speak. Of course, it has to be by Zoom now, but, um, I'm always looking for the new angle to present to people. Um, and last year, um, it was a, people understood the need of the Peace Institute and our minister was able to say, I have some money in this fund, we can't do it every year, but this should be out there in the community. And she started you know, um, giving it to our partners. So all of those things, but keeping an eye out for new people because they generate new people. And now we're beginning to ask people, like I've asked my son, I don't really need anything. Please donate to the Peace Institute for Mother's Day. For Don't give me something because I don't need it. That would make me very happy. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, or ask for, ask for friends to join, um, you know, because whoever has a connection and sees it. And once you get into the actual walk, I think that people do want to do it more, more and more and more. A lot of people come every year and they will bring people. And so that's, that's pretty much. Uh, the other thing that I've always done is taken the signs that they used to give. I don't know if they have them this year, but the signs, um, I would put one in front of my lot. I have a very small area between my house and the street. <laughs> I stuck one out there every year. Mostly people just went by year after year and saw the sign. All of a sudden people started asking, what is the Peace Institute? You know, as I was sitting out on uh, the steps or the porch and um, my next door neighbor um, donated some money last year and you know, just, little things like that. There's a church, a couple of churches around who have big lawns. And I asked them if they could put, would mind if I put a sign on their lawn, because I think if people even just get a connection with the name this year, it's that planting of the seed, that there's something out there. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Carol. 
Um, the first time I heard about it, you know, my, my memory is not so reliable, but I remember a lot a while ago getting a purple postcard in the mail. Tina, when, when did you start and stop that? Do you have any recollection? I mean, I haven't gotten a purple postcard in the mail in a while, but I remember that was the first time I heard about it. It was quite a while ago. That was, anyway, that was the first time I heard about it. And then um, uh, I talked to a friend who also got it. So we walked together and that was, that was my introduction and then learned more from there. But can you tell me more about a lawn sign? Cause I live on a very busy road and there's a lot of foot traffic and a lot of car traffic, which is picking up now. So how do I get a lawn sign? I'm happy to buy it. You don't have to buy it. Those will be out. Okay. So those are all the promotional materials that I mean, the community is working on. Yeah. Okay. So what the purple thing was you got is what our, there, there are just um, our cards. And again, we're behind schedule this year, you know, COVID caught us. So those things Aren't are coming all? out. Yeah. We're all behind. Okay. So when um, I, I don't want, I want to be the one responsible. So who, who should I talk to and when should I try to find out and when should I come pick up my lawn signs? Once we have them in store, then again, that's uh, the walk team or the uh, committee will let you guys know. Oh, okay. So we don't have that great. answer for you today. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cause that'd be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things that I've seen at the urban ministry, we, we um, had begun opening our doors to encourage our member congregations. We have about 50 member congregations, some of which have been active and some less active in the walk, but we started to open up in the morning to offer coffee and bagels to encourage people to kind of park near us. And um, we're right across from Medicine Park High School, which is a stop on the walk. Um, but, but some of the um, churches that I've seen have a really big turnout like First Unitarian Universalist Society in, in Newton really engages their youth group. And I think one um, opportunity is for um, uh, congregations to really encourage the interge intergenerational opportunity that this affords, because sometimes that's something that congregations are really looking for. And so young people can, can create signs, you know, they can walk to for a part of it. So I would really encourage folks to sort of spread the message that this is really a you know, one of those wonderful intergenerational opportunities. Um, yeah, um, and I also just wanna underscore, it's making me think uh, that I'm hearing these common themes of getting uh, uh, ministers or clergy or faith leaders involved, that having that presence is very inspirational. And so we actually, maybe we should do a minister's gathering at some point and really invite, um, maybe Margie would, help me sort of pull together a few ministers to ask them to be a voice because there's still some time, um, but maybe having that kind of leadership um, really stepping out and say that we're champions of this to their congregations would be effective. But also re really appreciating the message that I'm hearing from people about um, really doing that one-on-one -on -one outreach and also being really faithful and persistent. And that really makes a difference to stay the course, not just do it as a one-time thing, but really dig in and be committed and um, be in it for the long haul. Yeah. And I think this will be a great opportunity. Connie, you've been around for a while. So you're kind of the OG in this group. You know, so if you just want to share how you started within um, not just the Second Congregational Church of Cohasset, but really um, the faith community in Cohasset. So if you just want to share that. Sure. Sure. So a um, uh, little backstory, I remember, I remember when Lewis was killed. I remember reading about the walks uh, in the paper and I was thinking, oh, that's some kind of fun thing to do. And then I remember, I shared this before, but the time when it was big headlines, maybe the walk wouldn't happen because there wasn't enough funding for the police detail. And then, um, and I was already enough involved that after that appeared in the Metro section one day, one of the columnists had written about it. I got a couple of calls that morning, really early, like it's only 1.30 or so in the morning, people saying, whoa, what's going on? There's not gonna be a walk. 
So anyway, I, I was somewhat involved before then. And then after that, I became more involved initially through my church and through a relationship with the Peace Institute. For example, our um, outreach committee uh, on our church, we are quarterly donators to the Peace Institute. We give $250 every quarter on a regular basis. It's been going on for years. Um, and we make other donations. If uh, sometimes like it's past year, there was some money left in our outreach budget. I think about $500 that we designated for the Peace Institute. But that has been built up over the years. We've had Tina come multiple times. Uh, we've had Ali come, we've had Rachel speak, we've had Milton speak. We've had them be guest speakers for an annual MLK breakfast. So it's just sort of spreading the word. And it certainly grew beyond our congregation very quickly. We live in a small town, but uh, a lot of these same folks have been um, guest speakers at the Unitarian Church, First Parish in Cohasset. And uh, so we have a, a good team. It's called Compassionate Cohasset. We really couldn't come up with a name and we were getting some t-shirts done and they, they wanted to know well, what name is your team? So just kind of came up with that one real quickly, but it's, it's stuck. And um, so, you know, it's just such a great organization. It's got a great reputation. Everybody, um, you know, that knows about it likes to support it. it. You know, it did take me a number of years to, and to tell you the truth, to be very honest, I'm still somewhat struggling with, with quote, the elevator speech to be able to condense down all of the work and all of the deep meaning that the Peace Institute does when you're trying to explain it to somebody. But, um, you know, over the years, folks learn more about it, etc. I would also agree with uh, kind of piggyback on what Margie said, that the, something happened around um, the time of the, the Boston Marathon and some other just incidents that have been happening, these sudden violent incidents where unexpectedly you've got um, homicides. And, um, and I've seen even... Um, was very illuminated to me one day I was sitting towards the back of our church and uh, Tina was speaking giving the sermon and knowing my congregation well there were probably three or four different families that I know that had lost loved ones um, through a, a sudden tragedy and um, everything that and it was just like moths to a flame afterwards when we had the coffee hour and people could, could gather uh, because it's the same healing that the Peace Institute does with the homicide victims, you know, the survivors that works with other folks, whether you've lost your, your son, one was a, a suicide, one was a car hit by a truck you know, a variety of ways, but what they shared in common was the, it wasn't necessarily from an illness, but it was a sudden, one, one was the fire at the nightclub in Providence, Rhode Island. Mm. Um, just those, and so just, again, and, and like what Carol said as well, when you're reaching out to different folks, different things resonate with different people, but that's always a, a, good, um, a good thing to remember that um, what's being taught and preached at the Peace Institute is effective across, across cultures. Mm. So I'm all in. Thank you. Um, I just like to add also, um, I have put um, an appeal on Facebook and, um, and also sent out an email to my family members you know, if you can, mm -hmm. please contribute. And um, my niece, her husband uh, sent me a letter saying how he hadn't, he, his wife, my niece knew, but not the rest of the family, that his sister, who was his Irish twin, he was 11 months younger than she, was murdered. And he said, I don't tell people that. And so <laughs> I wear her, her T-shirt, me, real dime. So that's the other thing is, is that when you spread it out, you begin to find out that there are so many more. But shame comes with homicide mm -hmm. um, on both sides. 
And, um, and so uh, you just never know. Thanks, Margie. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Tina, do you want to say some words for us? Yeah, I do. Thank you guys for this. Again, I love I love intimacy um, because I think it gives more opportunity. And thank you uh, for sharing. Uh, um, I could say the same thing. I will continue to say the same thing. Yet for me, when you listen to each other, then you hear. It is a struggle because it is a struggle as an immigrant woman of color to talk to white people and to say, hi, I am worthy of. I'm not begging you for anything. I'm not looking for a handout. Um, if this is calling to you based on your faith, believe, and if you feel there's a space for you, then let's let's do this together. And so I, I for me, I'm, I think my emotions are really bubbling up right now because just hearing the service from you, you Dorchester, and really hearing you guys just share for me, that's more valuable than having me speak because you're hearing from each other and you're hearing how you're struggling. I struggle too. I struggle every day that I have to talk about, yet I don't focus on what's wrong. I don't focus on the problem. I really want to look at the solutions and really want to focus on the principles and uplifting and bringing it out so that we don't have to deal with the shame, the pain, and the stigma that we know this brain. And Margie, I appreciate you remembering um, Newtown, Scarlett yes, Lewis. You know, came down, um, especially when the marathon happened, because she didn't know what to do. And she just, she wanted to meet Denise. And so that's the connection that we made. But nobody knows that because it's not publicized. So even though we made that connection, what was the news was these two beautiful white mothers who lost their beautiful boys. That was the news. That was the attention. And so for me, it wasn't about the attention. It's about being able to connect hearts mm -hmm. yes. when needed to connect. And so that's the satisfaction that we get. So the fact that you guys are here, being able to talk, talking about what you do and also talking about the struggle that it is to tell your other allies, oh my goodness, how do I have that elevated, elevated speech? It's your heart. And Connie, uh, Jenna, what is it, Jenna? Your friend that, that did the, donated the dollhouse to us that where her daughter was killed that donated the dollhouse right. to us that she's a caterer. Right. And when we used to do events, she would come and that is what she wanted to do because she really felt, she felt connected to us. So when we're talking about death, murder, grief, and not just that, it's also, we're all losing at both ends. So there's a sense of, of connection for us. So um, what I also wanna do is, is, is share, uh, um, Carol, you talked about Milton coming, you know, talking about the work that he's doing uh, with the kids uh, in the prison. But what I want to do, the kids are an outskirt of the peace from within, which is again, is tools that we have. And that's the part that we want to make sure people understand. We are developing tools to teach the value of peace through healing and community service, through literature. And so I wanna give Kamal just a few minutes to talk about the peace from within because what happens, and this is where you can also probably focus on your elevator speech if you want to, to focus on this aspect of the work that we're doing. Um, you know, funding doesn't come easy again when we're looking to equip to enhance, to guide, to nurture, to bring about peace so that people are the architects of their own inner healing. 
I don't want anybody depending on me. I don't know what I would do if the Peace Institute wasn't here. Well, yes, you would. And so we want to be able to give people the tools that they need. So I want to just give Kamal a few minutes to talk about the Peace From Within project. And then this I am, you guys should have it. I was talking to First Church, I think I want to say in Acton, UUC, UCC. They all had this. And so they were just so impressed with the I am. So we publish, we want to give tools for others to see. So come on, I just want to turn it over if you want to say just a few words on the um, on the piece from within. Sure. Um, uh, hello, everybody. Again, my name is Kamal, and currently I am the facilities coordinator at the uh, Peace Institute. And um, just a, a quick um, background before I actually get into the actual piece from within. So I'm from Dorchester, born and raised in Dorchester, always knew about the Peace Institute, always knew about the Mother's Day Walk um, for, for Peace. Never really uh, participated in it. And um, eventually, you know, due to the situations of, you know, violence and that, that um, continued cycle that happened in the neighborhood that I'm, that I'm from, I myself was caught up in that same cycle of violence to where, you know, I ended up getting a prison sentence of eight to 10 years. So now during, during my prison sentence, um, I was housed at Plymouth County. And um, I was, you know, <laughs> first of all, let me, you know, not to talk bad about Plymouth County, but the reality is the, the programs there are lacking and they don't have the resources that it takes to, to really re rehabilitate people. And I really come from a, a standpoint of prison is not really, even though that's one of the big things that, that are um, said about prisons a lot, rehabilitation, rehabilitation, prison is not about rehabilitation for me. My experience was punishment. That's what it was about. It was about you did wrong, you did something bad, now take this punishment. We're not going to try to rehabilitate you. We're not going to give you the tools that you need to be a better person. But when you get out, we just want to punish you so you can think about what you did. And, you know, when you get out, <laughs> whatever. If you, if you mess up again, you're coming back to be punished again. So with that being said, um, for me personally, I always, I did want um, rehabilitation. I did want to do better you know I wanted to seek more from my life and, and what I and, and I knew that I was capable of doing more but I didn't have any resources in that prison introduced and then that's when I was introduced to first of all I was introduced to Milton because Milton does a um, program there um, a re-entry program so I did Milton's re-entry program which was great it was a uh, four month program that I stayed in for about two years <laughs> because <laughs> it was that good. And um, eventually came the other pro the next program, which was the Peace From Within. And now it was Milton and also Tina. They both came, that's when I was first introduced to her. Again, I always knew about the Peace Institute, but now this was like my first real introduction to, to the people of the Peace Institute. So once that, that program was introduced, the piece from within, I, I, I jumped on it. I hopped on that opportunity because I said, I already know what the Peace Institute is about. I already know Milton personally for being in his group for so long. And, and so when that opportunity came, I, you know, I was, I was on it. And I'm so grateful for that program because because of that program, um, one, I'm now a published author, <laughs> you know, as Tina showed you the I am. That's one of the that's one of the tools that they use. They use the the I am poem, and this poem was something that gave us as men who were locked up. It gave us a an opportunity to really express ourselves through poem. <laughs> you froze, Kamal. <clears throat> he froze. <laughs> through, <laughs> I, I was. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but no, I was saying that the the I am it, it gave us an opportunity to reach for something bigger than ourselves. 
you know, um, one, one part of my culture is hip hop, right? Hip hop is a part of the culture and, it, 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 and what rap is, it's rhythm and poetry. So people take those, those uh, poetic poems and they put them on a beat. And, 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 a, and a lot of times those, those um, lyrics, they really re reflect our neighborhood and stuff that's going on in our own personal life. But a lot of times they always have like a negative connotation to it. You know what I'm saying? So, so the I am poem, this was an opportunity to one, create a poem, but also something that is reaching deeper. It's not just about the violence around you. It's not just about, you know, the horrible circumstance that you find yourself in. It was more about reaching for peace within. And this was something that really helped us, you know, extrapolate, the the um things that we were dealing with inside beyond the anger beyond the fear beyond you know any negative things that 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 we're used to putting out there so so that was that was um that was really important for us you know what i'm saying because the i am poem and the peace from within itself just from the peace within itself it was it, it it's, it's a program that is designated on that the the um Basically, the, the goal of that program is to help people to seek their peace. It's about seeking your peace. It's about giving you a voice to your own peace. And they give you tools to do, to do that, which is where I was introduced to things like the, the feeling wheel. I was introduced to um, the, the, the guidelines, the principles of peace. All of these things was my first introduction to these things that, that we live at the Peace Institute. Right. But that that's what it was about. It was really about us putting words. Right. And really trying to find and understand the peace from within. And, 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 and it was very important for me because that was kind of like a starting. It was really like a starting point for me in my in, in my time that I did, because, um, again, I did eight to eight, eight to ten years. And um, I was introduced to the Peace Institute probably like in my, either like my third or fourth year. So that was very important for me in my, in my road to rehabilitation because I feel like it was, it was something that was brought upon early. You know what I'm saying? So, so it was something that gave me a foundation and a basis to continue on that road of rehabilitation using the foundation of the principles of peace, understanding that that feelings are messengers, right? Because <laughs> I might be angry, I might be feeling anger, but that anger is coming from somewhere deeper than that. It's not just about the anger. It's like you might, I might be feeling scared. I might be feeling pain. I might be feeling, it, 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 it's something else. It's something else. But that, that was my introduction to that and, and understanding like, wow, <laughs> you know, life is deep. <laughs> the, my experiences are deep. Um, you know, but also I can go deeper. I can go deeper in finding what it takes to, to bring about peace, not only for myself, but also peace for the community. Because that was another part of the peace from within. It's, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't a one-on-one -on -one program. It wasn't just me and Tina and, and Milton in a room. It was me and a bunch of other guys from a bunch of different other neighborhoods who were there for a bunch of different reasons, who committed a bunch of different crimes. It was about all of us coming together and one, individually finding out what is your piece, right? But at the same time, collectively saying, how do we peace? How do we peace together? How do I peace for myself? But how do we peace for each other? How do we peace each, each, together as a community? So, you know, it, it, it was very important and, and, and it still is because <laughs> this is this is back in like, I don't know, 2013, 14. But the but the work hasn't changed. You know what I'm saying? The, and the need for it hasn't changed. It's still there. So that that is definitely one one of the tools that the Peace Institute uses. And that's one of the things that um, our funds go go to go to help in that program. And it's, it is very important. It's very needed. I am a product of the peace from within because when I end up eventually getting out that four or five years later, <laughs> I went to the Peace Institute looking for a volunteer um, opportunity and they met me with a job and I've been working there ever since. And I've been home almost two, almost three years now. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a product of it. And, and, you know, they helped me from the start. And when I got out, they were there with me every step of the way ever since. Thank you, Kamal. And see, so just, you know, take a deep breath and inhale the, the, the power and the beauty and the strength of Kamal. This is who we are as a community. You know, we don't walk around promoting our pain and suffering. That's not, that's not who we are. And we don't want to be promoted that way. That's not what we want. Because when we do that, then there's no incentive to invest in growth and sustainability. And from a faith perspective, that's the lens that we come from. That's the lens that we come from. So before I turn it over back to you, Nora, I want to read Kamal's poem that I think Kamal is the first one, the first poem. I don't know if you knew that, Kamal. Kamal is the first poem in our first I Am. I, I actually wrote the introduction in that book too. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> he says, I am joyful and ready. I wonder if my enthusiasm will last. I hear encouragement from my past. I see support from my present. I want to satisfy the masses. I am joyful and ready. I pretend to be shallow. I feel excitement in my bone marrow. I touch the sky when I aspire. I worry that I'm too high or do I dare to go higher. I cry for a chance to be steady. I am joyful and ready. I understand that peace is a process. I say forgiveness is a mindset. I dream of unity and achievement. I try because I believe it. I hope that I can transcend that which is petty. I am joyful and ready. So Kamal not only signed his name, he also signed his number. 61301. <laughs> so this is, I want to come out to speak on this. I know that many times you hear the victims, you hear the homicide within our community. We are losing at both ends. So we are survivor-centered, offender-sensitive. It is both and for us within our community. So uh, those are, for me, that's, I wanna turn it back over to you, Nora, Mary, Margaret, to lead us in, I know the time, but I really wanted you to hear Kamal's voice as a man. I wanted you to hear Kamal's voice as someone that again, is a testament as to what we do. So when you are speaking about us and the work that we do, it's not about gun gangs and give a black child a job. That's, that's not what we do. That's not what we do. Thank you it's so not much. what we do. It may sound the right word to say, but then that limits us and you're limiting our community. And then you're saying it's only about the problem. And when there's no problem, then you forget about us. And so for us, no, it's a, it's a lifestyle, it's a way of, and it's a shift in mindset. When we invest in growth and sustainability, healing, love, peace, courage, then we will get that. If we only invest in the problem and we feed the problem, then that's what will manifest. It's even more problem. So it's again, words. And that's why I am not what I'm not. It's I am, who are you? Not who people say you are and who, who society tells us that we are. We're more than, we're not less than. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kamal. So Nora, uh, Mary Margaret, I'm gonna turn it over back to you guys. Thank, thank you, you both so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Nora. Thanks everyone. Um... Thank you, Kamal, for sharing. Um, I have on the schedule right now to sort of go over the logistical information about the walk. Um, I feel pretty confident that everyone here knows most of what I would share. <laughs> so 
Um, I think maybe what I'll do is just send out a follow-up email with all of the documents that I would go over. Um, and just if you have any questions, um, you, ha you have plenty of people to reach out to um, with those questions. And I know you're all um, very well informed. And um, I just want to take a minute to express my gratitude for um, being involved in the process of um, hosting these two events and also just getting to uh, be uh, familiar with the work of the Peace Institute. Um, I want to share a personal story, actually. My dad is a big brother in the Big Brother Big Sisters program, and um, he was at his little brother's school a couple of years ago um, for an event, and um, there was a shooting while he was there. Um, and very fortunately, no one was killed, but um, it really, um, it woke my family up to the fact that that school was down the street from our house and we had not um, realized that that, uh, that could happen to us. Um, and uh, I think it also helped us to come to the realization that it didn't mean there wasn't violence in our community. It just meant that that violence looked different and that we, uh, we couldn't be unaware of the violence in our community any longer. Um, and so I think, you know, so much of what I've, I've been hearing throughout this process is how important it is for um, people who uh, homicide is not something that you see every day or hear about every day. Um, to do the internal work and to, to realize that um, there's a lot of different kinds of violence in, um, in the world and that um, we, like we've been hearing so much today, it's about hope and peace and, and finding a way forward. Um, so, so I just wanted to share that. Um, thank you all for, for being here this morning. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Mary Margaret. Thank you, Nora. So um, I wanted to close us by thinking back to when I first came to the urban ministry and I was looking for ways that the urban ministry should partner in the community that we're a part of. And I went to the Peace Institute and, you know, getting around Boston, you're sort of rushing and making your way through traffic and feeling a little frazzled and came in to sit with uh, Chaplain Tina to brainstorm and, uh, uh, you know, planning to just talk about the work of the Institute and what we do and how those things might intersect. And she came in and she sort of, as she, I think, I think, I think she is inclined to do, she sort of upends expectations sometimes about what a moment is supposed to be like. And instead of jumping into a brainstorm, it was just sitting and taking a breath in and a breath out and breathing and um, being in space together and then looking at the principles of the Peace Institute on the walls and inviting me to uh, get in touch with what spoke to me. And it transformed that moment in a way that I thought was um, really touching and beautiful and I really valued. And that encounter and being part of walks um, uh, really persuaded me that the urban ministry should get behind this opportunity. And today I can, you know, sort of here in the depth of the stories and the nuances, you know, all the more um, why it is important for the urban ministry at our, at our intersection between communities, why it is so important for us to get behind, to follow, to learn from, to listen to the Peace Institute, and to engage our member congregations that are in the suburbs um, in bringing resources to bear in the way that they're invited, which is an honor to be invited to support and be part of. Um, and so I want to sort of charge you with going back to what Carol Genovese said, to walk is beautiful, um, to walk and to be in solidarity is important. And we also need to remember that this walk is a fundraiser and our call is, and our invitation to honor is to raise money in our congregations and in our spheres. Um, and that we don't want Tina to be in the position of her, her being the one always asking. We, we need to go and ask our congregations and our communities to, um, to walk yes, but really to make it a priority 
to um, support the Institute's work and the way the Institute wants to do that work. There are resources in these communities and we know that and we can give. Um, and I wanted to invite us this year to be renewed and to be bold, uh, to not just raise a few more, raise what we raised last year or to make, you know, or to think because it's a pandemic that we can't do quite what we did last year. I think we should be bold and ask for more um, and to remember the resources that are out there that we really can bring them to bear um, and to imagine what is possible. Um, so please go back to think creatively and to really ask um, for what you think your congregation, your community is capable of. Um, uh, so uh, that, those are the words that I want to leave you with is to be bold, um, to go forth and really ask a lot because we can do it. And I re I'm really grateful to everybody for being here with us. Think of new people that you can reach out to, new colleagues. Um, new congregations, uh, and keep keep walking and moving. So thank you. Paula, any final words? It looked like Paula had something to say. Oh, I'm Mary Margaret. Those were amazing, and I just wanted to say that somebody brought up um, getting youth involved, and one of the things that I've noticed from working with youth groups is they're natural fundraisers. And if you say to them, do you have creative ideas on how to fundraise? They won't just have 10, they will have 50 and they will be fun and they will be so out of the box in ways that we hadn't thought of. Like they could write their own books on fundraising um, because they get it and they're passionate and they're excited. And during this COVID, they, during this pandemic, they've, they've experienced things and they've, been affected um, by homicide, but they, they know what school shootings are. This is a generation that unfortunately has experienced school shootings. So this will connect with them. And I would say that I think they're your best fundraisers. I think like Elizabeth and I can make suggestions, but seriously, I'd rather hang out with a group of kids and say, tell me about fundraising because I think I'd learn much more than I ever learned in my classes. So I just want to invite people to do that and um, let them let them be the educators. Do you have like youth peace ambassadors or you know some kind of role that you could like dealt, you know that there could be youth peace ambassadors within congregations that could be sort of charged with doing some of that? Well, again, a lot of that's why a lot of the congregations have done that. Uh, Temple Israel, you uh, you. Fusion, a lot of them have created their young people. I think within Temple Israel, they they do like this, I, I don't want to say serving, but it's um, coming of age. They've used the P-Zone. So in coming of age, uh, Rachel and Elena have gone to present. Tally is a part of it. So if we, you know, those are the things that we can look at. They have ideas and they create their own process. We don't have it because again, we're not, we're not, our focus is not youth. We're still working on that. So we look to those entities that have it and how are they uh, doing it? Also, you, you, uh, I want to say, I want to say the one in Newton Fusion. Um, and I shared it at the other one. What they did is they took the, uh, I think Steps for Peace or, ah, uh, uh, what's his name? Lawrence, Lawrence created, we have like the Sneakers of the Peace Institute with the principals and those are things that they've given. So we can check in with Elena and Lawrence. Um, they have created stuff for when we've gone to other uh, congregations to talk to the young people and engage them in that. So they have a lot of those activities, but. We've talked about uh, getting volunteers for each of these segments, but we haven't had that yet because we can barely get, you know, the, right. the adults to do that. And I think who I think you said it, uh, Carol. A lot of the moms, that's what they have done. They have said to their children for Mother's Day, "This is what I want." Um, one of the things, even Janice is. Um, 
one of the things she's been doing is looking at the sibling survivors and the young people because they do, they have done a lot of activities also. So those are things that we can look at. But I, what I would say is they, like Paula said, the young people or the, the team leaders within the congregations, this is the work that they've done with their young people. So instead of us kind of saying, here's what we have, yeah. Yeah. it's still going back to them to say, what have you done? What activities have you done? Um, and, and, and yeah, so that, you know, that Great. would be the best yeah. recommendation for us. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I just want to say one other thing is the stimulus is coming out. And mm. some of us are getting the stimulus and don't need it. And um, Emmanuel and I are hope to give it to a lot of different places and people, but um, this is something that could generally be put out in case there are a lot of people who are in our situation. Um, so just thinking. Yeah. <laughs> And also tax returns to put that in the same category. I think we also wanted to leave it if you guys had any questions. I know we said a lot, you guys spoke a lot, but are there any additional questions that you had? No, we're great. So I wanna share with you guys also, and I shared it at the last one, I'm at Temple Zion on April 4th. They're doing an event. We just did uh, Belmont. My team did Belmont. They did Fireside Chat. I am at First Parish doing a sermon on April 11th. First Parish Need, I'm sorry. Uh, and then the UU South Acton, that's what it is. Uh, South Acton Church UCC they're having an event 321 inviting the community and they are going to <laughs> it's just funny i asked them so what's what's the event what's happening when do you want me so the reverend satina you're in you know i'm like oh okay no pressure but it's a it's a one hour uh same similar to this and one of the things we're going to do is invite them to try on the i am as a community, invite them to try on the I am because I think until you are invited to try on, it's still going to be about us. Mm -hmm. Once we extend this invitation to you to try on the I am, as what I read, then that will click and it'll just be incredible. So, what I'll do also is, um, just create a list and let you guys know. So Mary, um, Nora, you can probably also share it with the uh, people sure. who sign up that are a mm -hmm. member of the UUM. And you know, Connie, you guys will have that. The walk committee will have that, but then everybody will see, oh, this is where the Peace Institute. So if it's not a sermon, but if it's the activities or is the, the gatherings that they have, uh, on a Saturday or similar to this, then other people will be able to join. So BJ and I will work on that and get that out to you by, by tomorrow. Um, Tina, I have a question. I don't understand. Is this a, a book of a way to, I know that Kamel's uh, beautiful poem is in there, uh, but is this, uh, it's, is it a method or is it, uh, I, I don't have a full understanding. Is this a booklet? It's a book that you can purchase, uh -huh. Elizabeth or Paula, can you put the link on lulu.com? It's a book that you literally can go and purchase. Okay. And so this is, again, brings revenue to us. The men yes. get this for free. It's, again, when people want to know certain things, for me, is here, go read. Just, just read. Oh, just great. hear from the heart. So this is also one of the things when we first started, we used to do the peace curriculum in the school, teaching peace through literature and yeah. community service learning. And a part of that, again, why literature, why peace? To Kill a Mockingbird. How many of you know the story of To Kill a Mockingbird? What does that have? Death, murder, kill, racism, poverty, right? Well, how do you teach peace about that? Well, we did. 
So we will equip the teachers, uh, teachers guides, teachers peace conference, everything that we do, it's about peace, it's about peace. And so once the students then go through the curriculum, community members would go in, different members of the community, and then they would say, this is how I am practicing peace in my life. Whether you're a nurse, a police officer, a doctor, a minister, but it's about I am practicing peace. And then the teachers teach, then they're invited to write essays after they read, write an essay on your understanding of peace, your commitment to peace, and there's a third one. Oh, and then in service learning, just go serve. Oh, and it's, not about, it's not about you. Yes, service is okay. Doing for others. Yes, you want to help others. When they were done, then they were asked to reflect how did this service translate to peace within you? So many times the students benefit more than the person that they were in service to because for the first time they learned what the meaning, what the true meaning of peace meant. And um, for Kamal's daughter's sake, that's what we want to do. Create peace for her generation so that she doesn't have to deal with this fact. So it's a Boston's book of peace and the same with the burial guide. These are the tools that we use to equip others yeah. to regain a sense of control and to be the architect of their own inner healing. So a lot of the funding is for us to be able to produce these materials so people mm -hmm. are not depending on us speaking, but that they are that they can then again, see the power that they have. Kamal is an author and he was a poet and he didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's really powerful to hear about that uh, because I think it's very important for congregations to do that too. We have sometimes a lot of people that don't get involved with um, this whole concept of creating their own peace and also working out in the community and extending themselves. Well, Carol, that's a conversation we're having when we're meeting with you guys. Because I we, look forward okay, to it. Okay, this There's, is what we've tried to say to you guys. That's why when you look at how the multi-faith community can get engaged, invite us, invite us to introduce you to our tools. I can do sermon, ah, great. I can talk to you, that's great. When you bring us in for you to try on, many of you have done the piece from with, the piecing it together. You have done it, are you now trying it on? So for us, those are the tools that we're saying, we, we've talked with Reverend Joy, the Peace of God Project. That's mm -hmm. what we have in here. Can you bring us in? We will really train you with these tools that you can then own. Yeah. yeah. And we continue to move. So I'm glad to hear you said that because that's our goal. I can talk and I will go and talk because I want to tell my story. But it doesn't really mean anything is when I walk away, then I got to come back the next year and say the same thing over and over. And what's <laughs> how are we trying it on? Mm -hmm. So this is perfect. This is powerful. This is amazing because it's taken us a long time. And now you guys are trying it on. And that's what we want to do. We want to really transfer our knowledge. You know, there's a thing in the scripture that says, give a man a fish, feed him for the day teach them how to fish. I don't know what else it says, but whatever that, <laughs> we like want that. to make sure that we're, we're teaching people how to talk about peace, how to really give us all what we need to create the peace of the city that we are all looking for. So these tools are our, 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 um, these are our tools that we have to move forward, to shift how the city is looking and that we can really bring the peace that we all are looking for. Um, Tina, uh, Mary Margaret, uh, if you do decide to have a special Zoom with the ministers, if you would please be sure and let me know about that. And uh, because I would definitely like my minister, we have a new minister who, um, yeah. I think would be very interested. And then also, of course, I would share it with the Interfaith Committee. Okay. 
Sounds well, good. I think that's the power right here, Mary Margaret and Connie as the interfaith, because many members of the interfaith committee are members of the UU Urban Ministry. So I think working together and doing that, and now Suzanne is on, you know, then the temples will be a part of that. Because again, like I said, there are about six or seven temples that we go out that have committed to participate that we are going out to speak at. So now that we have someone from the temple, Connie is not on you to go seek in the temples, but now here we have, uh, you know, Rabbi Suzanne to be able to do that. But then we're really coming under, um, you know, you, you urban ministry bringing us together because we know you guys meet in different, um, you know, segment and multi-faith, but for us, we, we, yeah, so I'll send that out to you. And once you do that, uh, you know, uh, Reverend Earl, um, I think that will give us the way we want. And if when you do that, can you please include this statement of interfaith statement of support? Because those are the things we can get signed, but it's not going to come from us. It's going to come from a minister talking to a minister saying, let's sign this. And then that we add that to our, um, to our website. And I'll just jump in to say that that'll be one of the things that I send out in the follow-up email. So you'll have that right. document. All right. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your thoughts and your hearts. It's really right. um, nice to hear everybody. And thanks to, to the Luth D. Brown Peace Institute people for allowing us to work with you on this. Thank you, Kamau. Before we hop off, um, I would love to get a screenshot of all of us, um, if everybody is comfortable with that. If not, you are more than welcome to turn off your screen um, and just have your name or pop fully out of the call. Um, but if everybody could smile, um, and I will do that quickly. <laughs> oh, I'm going to hold the idea. There we go. <laughs> all right. One, two... Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. everybody. Thank you. Well, well, yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.